All right, uh, a very, very uh, good evening to all. Welcome to Venus Education. Uh, this is Sean Chua once again. For those that don't know me, uh, basically, I'm the master trainer for chemistry in Venus Education over here. And in Venus Education, we specialize in chemistry for the last, how many years? I don't know, since 1999, all right? That's where we kind of start teaching chemistry one way or another. So it's been a long while, right? Since 1999. Now, um, probably most of you uh, would actually know me as the invited author for both uh, the 10-year series uh, for both the O-level pure chemistry as well as the A-level H2 chemistry 10-year series. And probably some of you are using the 10-year series uh, itself in uh, your school or at home because you purchased one and you realize hey, this book not too bad and then you're looking at the questions and the answers. The questions are not by me, they're by Cambridge, right? That's their copyright, so it has nothing to do with me. Uh, if I'm using the topical book, what I did is I take the exam paper, I split them into the respective topics as much as I can. And my main job actually is to write the suggested answers. All right. Uh, that's what I do on a yearly basis. So I've been writing for the longest while. Can't even recall how many years really. Um, and this year I'm invited again to write it. All right. I'm just given the order by the publisher. The one that I'm writing for is a, a SAP publisher. Um, not promoting for them, but I always think, and that's the reason why I wrote for them for the last 12 years, I think. It was with someone else previously. Uh, I think they take more ownership of the book, right? So they are they are they are very serious about making a book, good book. And I'm equally serious. If you invite me, I don't just go there right for the sake of doing. If I make a mistake next year, I want to correct it, right? There are some 10 year series, right? That when there's a mistake five years down the road, right? You realize the mistake still there. So nobody cares about it, right? So those are the publishers I, I will not work with together. I'm very sure someone has a feedback that's a uh, that's an error, but you know, they will care. So I don't work with people like this. They are not serious at all. All right, put it that way. Okay, now I think most of you are here. So uh first thing first, I want to share screen with everyone so that give the online students a lot of privacy. Um, here we go. Online students camera all up so that you'll not be kicked out of the workshop one way or another. All right, okay, good. All right, camera all up. So um, formally, haven't welcomed you all yet, right? So I just want to do a formal welcome, uh, all of you on-site and online to our annual uh, O-Level uh, Practical Theory Workshops, okay? So we have been doing this for a while already. Um, it all started with our MCQ workshop course called 100% MCQ. And then our, the right keywords, it has been there for, I don't know what, 15, 16 years on a yearly basis. Uh, and then every year, there will be students and their parents or guardian will ask, hey, what about the practical? Do you have anything for practical? So you realize in the market, people don't do this. Right? You take a look at most tuition center or tutor, they, they don't want to go through this. It's not easy. By the way, I just finished two days, uh, Monday and last night, which is Tuesday, with my A-levels in eight hours. We just finished it, right? And yesterday, overrun for 30 minutes just to finish up. Really hardcore they ask. Anyway, we focus to yours. So uh, a few years ago, we started this, and then the response was very, very good because uh, we all know, right? Um, out of the three paper, O-level students, right? This group must be, right? Okay. You have paper one, you have paper two, and then you have paper three. Paper three is your practical, which is the first paper, right? I don't know why they don't want to call it paper one, but anyway, this is called paper three. And what happened is uh, paper three is the most difficult paper, at least if I'm the one taking it, which I took last time. Paper one MCQ, paper two write keywords. Um, I'm training my students, paper one to get full marks. Paper two, I also encourage you to go as high as possible. Personally, if I'm taking an exam right now, for paper two, I am going for full marks also. But paper three, the practical, I won't, don't, I don't dare. I want, I want, you know, I want, uh, but I don't dare. Because I never seen people get full marks for practical before. Yes, most people, all right, practical, what they get? They fail or just pass. Make sense? All right, correct. Enough. Fail or just pass. But fail won't feel too badly, one. Unless you go there, can't even open your eyes, or, uh, can't even observe some, some color change, right? Obviously, that's very bad. So this is very, very tough. Right? <laughs> um, so that's how it was born. Now, so in this chemistry practical uh, so-called theory workshop, what we do is this. Let's go back to practical, right? Practical, the percentage, right? So let me write it out, okay? So the percentage itself, all right? Uh, what is the percentage? Anyone know? Quick one, I don't spend too much time here, right? All this for exam board itself, all right? Uh, paper one MCQ, 100%. Uh, you don't even know this, all sizes the same, huh? Paper two, written, 50%. Yeah, lah, come on, flow it. Paper three, your practical, 20. Now, some people say, oh, yeah, 20% not important. At least agree. Important. At least must get 10%, agree or not? Must pass it. What's not important? Uh, this one obviously must ace it, lah. This one you can get. Can I say, let's aim for 15% at least. We try like 12 to 15%, right? Even you never passed before. Those have been okay, then you aim higher, all right? So if you're aiming for distinction paper three, right? I would say at least you need a 15%, all right? So you take the marks and then you divide accordingly, it should be 15%, at least. If you're looking for A1, E2, all right? Or even B3, you need that, okay? Assuming your paper one not too bad and your paper two uh, not too bad, all right? Okay, so now practical itself has what? Now, you see, huh? I think most of you, Again, if your eyes open properly that day, not like having a, a blah, blah like that. I think if you, most of you have no problem in following the experimental procedure, setting up the experiment, doing the experiment and collecting the data. I think most of you have no problem. Should be full marks or close to full marks, usually, yes? So that is not your issue. 
So that's why a lot of your kids think, telling me, it's not my practical, no good, my hands are no good. I always tell your back, are you sure it's your hand and eyes not good? Hands are eyes and hand, right? Your nose, right? Or is it something else that's behind? I think, unless you've got coordination problem, medical issue, there are no choice, right? So then when you have to see, and then maybe you can excuse yourself more practical, right? right? Okay? So I don't think it's the hands-on, the observation, the carrying out. All of you can carry out. Many skills don't know, we can, uh, read properly, uh, read properly. I don't know the issue. So all these things are still the issue. So what's the issue? The issue is a lot of your, or rather some of you, will start to lose marks where? In your tabulation, your results recording. All right, so that's the part. I don't know why. Is it your teacher never trained you properly or because you were dreaming most of the time in the practical when they discuss it? The recording has its own so-called rules. Understand? So today, there is one of the sections we're going to discuss. So that one is called the basic. We have to get the basic first. How to record? What is the significant figures? What is the decimal place? What is the precision? Right? So what are the correct things to do? The basic, right? The lab skills. So we'll be talking about that. Now, then, this is some. Most still okay. Then what happens is, as we proceed, I think a lot of you, once again, you read the, uh, the, the uh, so-called procedure, right? So again, you can conduct, and maybe you can record down the, 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 the readings, draw the table with the correct heading, whatever, right? The decimal place, the, the cynical place, oh, okay, you never lose marks there. Then you start to lose, where do you lose, start to lose marks? You start to lose marks when they ask you to continue with the calculation, and more important, the theory part. Why you do this? Why you do that? When I change something, what will happen to you? Make sense? Correct? Yes? Spot on? And that's why you're here. Make sense? And that one can be trained, okay? Although you need a bit of theory, so theory cannot be too bad, right? So that can be trained. And then, if you are really acing, you want to say, I want to push above 15%, what is the other one that some of us are struggling, or rather most of us are struggling? It's because all oh, this while you don't know the rationale behind the procedure, right? You do, 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 follow, follow, you take the results, uh, you don't know why you want to do that. Why they ask you to add this? Why they ask you to observe that? Because you don't know all this, don't know all this thing, you cannot do what we call the last four to six months question, the planning question, make sense? So tomorrow we'll be doing a couple of planning questions. All right, last year a lot, we write a lot, but this year I get them to type most of them in, right? So I think we can cover a few more questions. I add in another six more questions, I think, five to six more questions, right? To give you a more comprehensive kind of coverage. It's not exhaustive, it doesn't cover everything, but as comprehensive as the time allows us. Everyone okay? All right, so all in all, I think that is the backbone, the framework of this workshop, which I want you to understand first, okay? Before we get started, all right? So much, at least you know you come here for what? Make sense, huh? all right? If not, say, hey, yeah, it's not boring. Okay, then very easy. Now go back, watch Netflix, don't waste time. Okay, ah, don't waste time. Time is precious, all right? <clears throat> all right, so um, about the workshop. So today we have uh, all the way to, uh, we start at 6.30, we end at 10, three and a half hours. Tomorrow, same thing, another three of, uh, and a half hours, end at 10, all right? So uh, we will have two breaks just to let you know, all right? So I try my best to give you some breaks. Uh, first of all, let's make it one hour later, uh, 7.45, uh, study earlier or later, all right? I'm going to give you a 10 minutes break. Um, 10 minutes okay, or you're only 15. Huh? Have you ever taken your dinner? Online on site, by right, you should take it from dinner. Huh? All right. Uh, can I just say around 10 minutes? Huh? Okay, 10 minutes break. So uh, those on, uh, at home, obviously, you can grab something to eat. I believe most of you at home. Those on site, downstairs, there's a bakery. Just get a quick grab, uh, bag, a bread. There's a bubble tea store also, okay? All right. If not, uh, outside at the reset there, I put two boxes of Oreo biscuit. Right, in case anytime you can take a munch, munch. Okay, so 10 minutes over there. Uh, we end about 10, right? So maybe the next one about 10, uh, 9 p.m. So this is the time where you use your uh, toilet break. So use your toilet and then play your handphone, so on and so forth. Maybe another, I don't know, 5 to 10 minutes. Everyone okay? Can I, if not, play real, but anytime you need to go to use the washroom, just carry on, online, on, on site. Don't need to ask for permission. Yeah, so we have the uh, so called structure of the workshop already. So we have four sets of notes. Check, you should have. And this is the first one I would like to uh, start. Start small, then later we uh, go big, right? So uh, these are the four. Uh, first one is known as the practical theory tenure analysis. So please have this out, right? You should have four sets, lab skills, topical specific revision, as well as a planning. Okay, the four things that I discussed, <coughs> that I'm discussing. Okay, okay. So the first one is here, a fast one. Now, in case you've never, never ever been to uh, examination board website, I've copied out so called, uh, nothing wrong, I believe. To per this is according to them, you will be tested on the following for all level CalCam students. All right, in case you never know, so at least I tell you these are important, you might want to prepare a bit, right? Titration, uh, acid based titration. There are many types of titration. It can be acid based titration, uh, whereby you use uh, suitable indicators such as metal orange, very famous, right? Metal orange. So you must know the color change of metal orange. Yes, you need to know the color change of metal orange, which later I'll discuss with you all. Right, this one keep coming up. Uh, other type of titration may also be required when appropriate sufficient working will be uh, will also be given. So, what other types of redox titration? When you use an oxidizing and reducing agent, right? Also possible redox titrations. So redox titration usually, right, uh, do not need indicator because uh, the substances that is oxidized or reduced, there's a change of color usually, right? So these are the basic you should know by now. If you don't know, it means time to know, right? 
Either you have been dreaming, your teacher has been dreaming, or both of you have been dreaming, whatever, right? Doesn't matter. There was a dream there, right? And that is not allowed. Okay, right? No need uh, indicators allowed. You do redox. So titration, very common, right? Speed of reactions, right? Uh, also equally involved, uh, uh, important. So you're basically you are measuring the rate of reaction. What are the things you measure? Temperature, volume, length, very seldom. That's more of physics, I think. Mass and obviously time. You always use a stopwatch when you do rate of reaction, right? Because it's changing something over change in time. Okay, so time is confirmed. <clears throat> okay, so you're gonna measure the temperature, the volume, uh, the mass, something along that line. Uh, you will be tested on separation techniques. All this is examination board. Ask me to tell you one, okay? Singapore examination assessment board. So separation techniques such as what? The things that you have learned all this while, simple paper, chromatography, filtration, uh, distillation, right? Crystallization, right? Crystallization. Sublimation, right? All these kinetic particle theory or rather separation techniques. Uh, you also be tested on salt preparation. So all this you must prepare before going, right? Salt preparation, right? How to get an insoluble salt. Now, it may not be asking you to do the practical, are you me? But it could be a theory question inside there. Right? These days, the theory questions are all in your practical paper. So it's about theory. So you even do not do the practical, who cares? If the theory is good, you get the two marks or three marks. Right? <coughs> Don't forget about gas collection. Right? So what are the ways you can collect a gas? Remember? Gas you can use a gas syringe. Right? I probably don't fill this in. Right? I want you to take a look. How else you can uh, collect a gas? Uh, you got upward and downward delivery. Remember that? Right? These are the common way. Upward delivery, downward delivery. So one more. Displacement of water. Some people uh, write a bit more say downward displacement of water. Right? Usually we just say displacement of water. A bit squeezy here. Right? Get this in. So at least you know what is required. <coughs> so these are theory I believe is linked. Because this is what they say. You're supposed to know. Okay? So carry on. Number six. Um, qualitative inorganic analysis, all right? So uh, qualitative inorganic analysis uh, involving an element compound mixture, including displacement reaction. So how many displacement reactions have you learned before? By right, the common ones, which are one? Shoot it out. Metal displacement, all right? So get ready, understand the concept and how it's being played. They will ask you probably for observation. It may not be a practical hands-on. It could be just a theory question. And they give you two, three marks over there, as well as halogen displacement. I think these two are the most common one. Halogen displacement reaction, All right? Uh, as well as uh, things like a uh, test for oxidizing reducing agent, right? Which you should know based on the redox topic. <clears throat> and obviously your QA, all right? Uh, you'll be asked to test on what? You'll be asked to test uh, on your cations, anions, and gases. Nothing much, right? All this uh, is in the uh, so-called practical notes. You learn to memorize it. Now, just to let you know, this is what SCBA say. Uh, you will not be required to carry out tests involving PV2 plus ions or sulfur dioxide. Yeah. Yes, all right? So uh, these two, you don't have to know. Okay, and you don't have to do that. Do not, especially your, for your QA test, right? Which we always say is one of the questions, right? Most of the years. Only got one year, it came out with two to three marks. Everyone was like cursing. What the hell? No QA in medical. That's what they say, right? I think two or three years ago, something like that. I don't remember. Okay, that was a year that, whoa, create havoc. Because everyone was like getting ready for QA, right? And then never come out. Then you come out all the kinetics, I mean, uh, rate of reaction, your energy changes, your, your volumetric analysis of titration. Okay, uh, reaction involving ions not included in the notes for QA, which is given uh, in your QA uh, or rather your practical exam, please take note, may be tested. Uh, in such cases, right, in such cases, candidates will not be expected to identify the ions, so they will never ask you, hey, is it manganese or chromium ion, which is not in your syllabus. Everyone okay? Something like that. But only to draw a conclusion of the general nature. Something like that. Or basically, they just want you to look into the color change and then they, they give you some colors. I don't know how they play. All right, so again, be very flexible. All right, be very flexible. There are a lot of ways to test. Okay, uh, the gas. Uh, candidates should not attempt tests other than those specified on substances. Uh, there's an exception though. So if they never ask you to test something, you don't need to test. But there's one thing you must always test when you suspect there's such a thing. Right? What is it? When there's test for gas. Make sense? So you add um, a solid into a solution and the solution you kind of know is an acid. It could be, it's very highly possibly acid metal reaction, acid carbonate reaction, agree me? It could be acid something else, right? So, but it could be acid metal, Right, and it gives you hydrogen gas, or it could be acid carbonate. Right, and then you get carbon dioxide gas, and so on and so forth. Right, so you automatically will say, okay, I get rid of the test for hydrogen gas, and the test for carbon dioxide. <coughs> okay, people read this for uh, like read. Okay, read. No, I read and I try to tell what the hell do you want me to know? Right, that's always what I do. What do you want me to know actually? Right, what's inside that you want me to know? Okay, last one, read, I believe, and then we we'll finish the session. Uh, your organic analysis, qualitative organic analysis. Um, 
require lightly, uh, organic very seldom will come out. The only thing that I think it, it, it has a high chance is your test for CC double bond, your unsaturation. Okay, so it's really to test, ask you what is the observation, all right? As well as uh, drawing general conclusion. So as a general conclusion, the organic compound compound you are testing is unsaturated. Okay. Yeah, but it doesn't mean cannot come out because equals bromine is not harmful. Okay, easily put it into alkene and ask you to test. Ah, decolorous. Organic chem, organic chemistry. Ah, decolorization of equals bromine. Okay, so write down since we are right. So uh, you add uh reddish brown, right? Reddish brown. Uh, equals bromine, and what happens if there's a CC double bond addition reaction occurs, and therefore uh, it decolorizes, it becomes colorless. Decolorizes. <clears throat> well, you're jotting down, all right, uh, the two things I forgot to mention a bit. Uh, first thing, uh, the session is recorded, all right, for online on site students, so that if you're going to watch it again, you can, it should be available by tomorrow. Okay, so don't know where to find, check with my admin. Uh, second thing is, everyone here, right, online on site, who, who the hell are all these people? Huh? Let me look around. Uh, I will say, if I'm not wrong, two thirds of you, there are 17 students on site, there are 11 students online at the moment. Got a few students cannot join us. They will be listening to the recording and checking up with me on uh, things that they don't understand. And I'll be helping them via WhatsApp. Anyway, so today live, we have 17 plus 11, 28 of you. Out of the 28, two thirds of you, I think, are my own students. So you join my tuition classes and then we see each other uh, on a weekly basis. The other one third, I don't know you, you don't know me. All right. But today, one thing is the same. Every one of you, you're my student. Everyone okay? Not today. Today and tomorrow, at least for this workshop. Okay now? All right. So we go. Um, we can't hear that question. Thank you. Uh, could you repeat the question? Oh, Joanne, all right. Uh, the question was asking this one, which I wrote down just now. Thanks a lot for checking in. All right. Feel free to uh, mic in if you want. Uh, is that uh, she was asking, how do you test? She was saying that she never learned this before. And she never do this experiment before, the organic chem, right? Test for unsaturation, the double bond. So she was asking if how to test. So uh, I was telling her it's all about organic chemistry. Is it okay? Can? All right, and we use equals bromine to test it, right? Because there's an addition reaction. Okay, so again, we're testing it on organic chem. CC double bond. Okay, now this is the part. Have you ever used a data logger before? You always see this word in your, your chemistry notes, right? Have you used it before? Some have, most don't have, right? A few years ago, I've you three years ago. Now, you must familiar, usually they will not ask you to touch the data logger because not every school will data logger and it's expensive. Make sense? So data loggers normally is just like a computer screen. Make sense? So it's just like a computer screen that show you values, right? They just show you value, right? Appreciate that this is always attached to a probe. So this is your data logger and this is called a probe. So this is like a, 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 a like this, like, like the monitor or whatever, it's a probe. So this probe, all right, can be used or can be changed to a different type of probes to measure different things. All right, so it can be, uh, the probe can be used to measure pH. So it's called a pH probe, i.e. this whole thing like becomes a pH meter. Everyone okay? Make sense? Or we can also use it for electrical conductivity. Where we saw, keep seeing this word, acid base salts, remember? All right, electrical conductivity. pH or even a temperature probe. So you don't use a thermometer, you use this. Go in, also show you the results. So basically, the data logger that is his job. Am I okay? Can I? So don't get, get a shock. People talk electrical conduct, uh, uh, um, uh, a probe that measures electricity, electrical conductivity. Uh, why got data logger? Because never see before. Have that is the true meaning of the data logger. First thing first. Am I okay? Can I? All right. You just lock the result. That's on the name is a data lock. Right? Lock the data. All right. It shows the data for you to copy them. It's a screen basically. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So when do you do this? Now? once again, see ah. Uh, no, I say in case your teacher never tell before. Candidates are expected to be familiar with use of data loggers. When you use it, SEAB say one. Assessment of planning may include the appropriate use of data logger. Can you see it coming out already? All right, planning. They ask you, oh, how you measure the temperature change, huh? how you do this, do that. Okay, like that. Okay, that makes sense, right? Make sure it makes sense. Uh, honest to that, you can give me a nod. I'm looking at you, by the way. Camera a bit down, come on, right? Teaching is communication. Learning is communication. You realize a lot of time during the pandemic, what you've been doing is listen to recorded lessons for some of you. You fell asleep when your teacher was doing that. Why? Because they were talking to the screen. They never talk to the screen and assume they're reading from the screen. They never assume that the student is opposite of them. Okay? All right. That's why it's monotonous. And I'm not doing that because you are always online on site. Am I okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. Yay. This could be interesting to every one of you. <laughs> 